So this is a lateral sprain injury of the ankle and this is quite a typical bruising pattern. This is day six now from the injury. The original injury was the inversion injury, so that means the foot inverts. And initially there was a large lump that came up here and then the bruising started to come out say day three or four. So there's not a lot of ankle movement when the sprains are this fresh but doing it sort of five or six days later is a lot easier than doing it on day one of the sprain. When there's so much blood there, it's really difficult sometimes to work out which ligaments are sprained and involved. And there's movements required to see the ligaments well, and that's obviously very hard to perform on day one of the injury. So the clinical test that goes along with an ATFL injury is the anterior draw test. Some people try and perform the anterior draw test while they're scanning, but I find it works really well to just plantar flex the foot and make sure that you've got the instep or the medial malleolus propped up with a large towel to allow free movement of the ankle up and down during the scan. Now you're going to need to compare with the other foot as well, so just make sure that you've got both shoes and both socks off. So you can lie the patient on their side, start with the lateral ligament complex and we're going to begin with the syndesmosis first, which is for a high ankle sprain. Then we're going to complete our lateral ligament complex and then finish with the midfoot. And then we roll the patient the other side and we'll do the medial malleolar ligaments. So we're starting the assessment for the syndesmotic injury, so a high ankle sprain. The angle that we're going to need to achieve is is like 45 degrees upward from the lateral malleolus. So we palpate the lateral malleolus and the probe angle is like this. Obviously we need to be above the ankle joint. So if you're too low, you just see the talus, which looks like that. As you slide the probe superiorly, there's the syndesmotic ligament. And then obviously you're going to need to heel and toe the probe so that the ligament is nice and horizontal with the top of the screen. And you can see the oblique angle of the probe there, so it's like a 45 degree angle. There's multiple bands, so make sure you run inferior to them and also superior to them. And then you can extend your search up the interosseous membrane as well. So if the interosseous membrane has a fracture, it sometimes uh, goes along with a high fibular fracture and we perform a thing called the squeeze test the squeeze test is probably not necessary if there's no syndesmotic injury down here. But if the syndesmosis is ruptured or looking torn, the next thing we have to assume is that it may involve the posterior syndesmosis, it may involve the medial deltoid ligament as well. And then one or two or three of all the lateral ligament complex has to be assessed. So while we're looking at the syndesmosis, it's important to also have a little look at the fibula and make sure there's no distal lateral malleolar fracture so that's all nice and smooth so we can take our picture of the syndesmosis so preferably not like that diving away from you you want it nice and flat and if there's a ligament injury there there's a whole other assessment that comes into play in terms of trying to widen that joint space and look for diastasis so I'll do that in a separate video all right so there's the syndesmosis we take images of that and then we move on to the ATFL so the anterior talofibular ligament so this ligament the easiest way to locate it is to start with the marker dot on the lateral malleolus and the other end of your probe points across the foot to the great toe or the first metatarsal so this is the angle we need to achieve so you can see it's oblique it's not a true trans and it's not really a longitudinal it points across the foot. What we can see is the distal fibula and we're seeing the talus. Now you need to translate the probe through the entire ligament. So what we're going to do to see the ligament well is to plant our flex. Now what we're seeing already is that there's some fresh hemorrhage around. So fresh blood looks like this, it's quite white. This is the proximal attachment for the ligament, this is the distal attachment this is the talus and we're seeing joint fluid just beneath. So you can see that there's already there's quite an irregular outline to the ligament and in a minute we'll look at the normal side so that you know what normal looks like. 
So our job is to now try and put tension on the ligament, straighten it out, pull it tight, look for instability of the ligament. So what we're going to do is plant our flex slowly. We're going to take the pressure off the ligament, so just really hover above the skin and guide the patient through plantar flexion. So if you can point the toe down, and then while that movement's held, you're moving back and forward through the ligament, trying not to push hard. And you can see laterally, it looks like some of the ligament slightly pulled tight on the plantar flexion move. Whereas this more medial portion, you can see how it just moves up and down with probe pressure. So this is all um, fresh hemorrhage and not real ligament. So it's definitely a high grade tear of this ligament. So the more lateral we come, this is the por portion where we're questioning whether there's some ligament still intact. So we can bounce on it as well, just to see if we can see blood or fluid moving up through the ligament. And obviously if it's a grade three, you'll see sometimes what look like blunt ends of the ligament and it won't pull tight at all on the plantar flexion. So we're gonna watch this portion here and get the patient to dorsiflex again. So slowly bringing that ankle up. And this is where the ligament should relax and get floppy again. And so now we can see the ligament's not straight. It's not pulling taut. Now if you can slowly plant our flex down again. And now I'm just going to bounce on it. And obviously this is creating a fair bit of discomfort for the patient if I push on here. So that's a good way to know which ligament's ruptured as well, is to push on it. Apologies. Okay, so with the full plantar flexion now, we're not seeing any real convincing evidence that that ligament is intact all the way through this bit. You can see there's a dip in the margin. So there's definitely some sort of a tear that tracks right throughout the ligament. So given the way that those ends look like they're sort of one blunt end there and one blunt end there, I'd be saying it's a grade three or a complete rupture. That's about the limit to our plantar flexion, so we can't really get it to pull tight on that plantar flexion, whereas a normal ligament will pull tight and have a nice flat um, upper margin to it. So in the lateral ligament complex, we've done ATFL and now we're moving on to the calcaneofibular ligament. So it's abbreviated CFL. And to fall onto this ligament, you need to aim at the midpoint of the heel and the lateral malleolus and start with the probe on this sort of an angle. Obviously you can also follow the perineal tendons down and around. So I'll show you what the ligament looks like. So if we follow the perineal tendons, which are stacked on top of each other here, here's the fibula. We're moving down more distally. There's the perineus longus, perineus brevis. And then we fall onto the calca calcaneus. So here's the probe angle. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way for you. So where the arrow is, this is the calcaneofibular ligament, or the calcaneal attachment anyway. And then it slings like a hammock up underneath these perineus longus and brevis te tendons to insert on the lateral malleolus. So the portion that we're concerned with seeing really well is the calcaneal insertion. Not so much the fibular attachment, although you will see it when it's pulled off the bone. So now what we're going to do is dorsiflex the ankle to see if we can pull that ligament tight. It should sling up underneath the perineal tendons and almost elevate them a little and the ligament should not be lax or concave on dorsiflexion. Now the movement's going to be difficult to perform so you may need to assist um, the patient to perform the dorsiflexion but here we go. So we're going to slowly dorsiflex watching that ligament going all right okay now even on that most maximal dorsiflexion that's about all we can get in an, in an acute ankle sprain we can see that it's quite thick from here to here and it still looks like it's concave on the dorsiflexion movement so this portion's intact it's probably likely still intact up here but if this portion's thick and we compare it with the other side then this is a sprain or a strain of the ligament. So we'd be thinking sort of grade one, grade two. 
So once we've examined the calcaneo fibular ligament, we can move on to the perineal retinaculum before we land on the third and final um, lateral ligament. So with the perineal tendons, it's common to get a split tear of the actual tendon. So we want to look for uniformity of the tendon so we can examine them from proximal to distal. And then when we get to the lateral malleolus, this is where we slow down and we have a look at the retinaculum. Now the retinaculum is this little sling over the top. It can detach from the lateral malleolus and if it's not detached but just strained, it'll look thick compared to the other side. So you can see I need to sort of push the posterior aspect of the probe in more so that we don't get an, an isotropy. That's my patient just telling me I'm pushing a bit too hard. Um, so this part of the retinaculum we can see really well. So this is the perineal retinaculum. As it dives away from us, obviously, we don't resolve it as well. So we can try and push the posterior aspect of the probe in and see a little more of it. But that, to me, looks nice and normal. It's definitely not detached. So if it pulls off the lateral malleolus, one of the things that um, happens down the track is the perineal tendons can sublux anteriorly over the lateral malleolus and they become unstable. So drawing circles with the big toe and, and moving the ankle around, sometimes they sublux anteriorly and fall out of their place. And over time, that sort of amount of friction and wear and tear will lead to perineal tendinopathy or degeneration of the tendons. All right, so the third and final of the lateral ligament complex is the posterior talofibular ligament. So we have the anterior talofibular ligament here, so ATFL, at the back is PTFL. Now for these two ligaments, we had to work the angles a little. For PTFL, it's true trans with this end of the probe on the lateral malleolus. And you can start over the perineal tendons, that's fine. But to see this ligament really well, because it's so deep, we do need to sometimes change to a lower frequency probe. So what I'm going to do is change to a 12.5 probe. Now to see the ligament really well, we're going to need to dorsiflex again, which is the movement that this patient finds quite difficult. So for um, any ligaments that are anterior to the lateral malleolus, we plant our flex to tighten them. Any ligaments that are in line with the lateral malleolus or posterior to, we dorsiflex. And the same principle applies on the medial side of the ankle. So now that we've switched probes, we're going to have a look at the PTFL. So if we start on the perineal tendons and then have a little look really deep, so drop the depth and the focal zone to have a look in the back of the ankle here and just move up and down until you can see the posterior talus. Now we're going to dorsiflex the ankle. So I'll move my hand so you can see the angle. That's really good. You can see I'm struggling a little bit with an isotropy. So I'm going to push the probe in a little firmer. And here's the PTFL. So it's a triangular ligament. It's very broad. We can make out the perineal tendons just in that picture but it's a very thick ligament, okay? And a lot of injuries don't involve the PTFL, so it's probably not as important. It's not really a game changer in terms of surgery like the syndesmotic ligament complex is. Okay, so that's PTFL. So ATFL, we go from the lateral malleolus angling across to the big toe, and we plant our flex. So you can see there's a big wedge defect in our ligament there. Sometimes if you're on a lower frequency probe, it might mean that you can use harmonics to try and show defects in the ligament, so we'll try that. There's no straight fibres that are still intact and pulling that ligament taut on the plantar flexion. We'll turn harmonics off, so calcaneofibular ligament, midpoint of the heel to the lateral malleolus. That's the view there, but we're not seeing it pull tight. So if we were measuring it to compare with the other side, we'd measure it like this at the calcaneal attachment. And for the PTFL, we aim for true trans and you come above the Achilles insertion, sliding up. 
and there's the ligament deep within the joint down there, so that's PTFL. And same thing, we could measure it like this.